Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you to the folks who I'm about to share with you who shared their own bits of Star Wars joy with me when I asked a few months ago about experiences seeing Return of the Jedi for the first time. So these are a few of the fun responses that I received and I wanted to share them with you. And the range of experiences is interesting because it does highlight the different ways in which we experience Star Wars movies when the the original trilogy was released it's certainly a different kind of situation to what things were like today for example this one from um, Adam Jung um, 6051 says his first time seeing Return of the Jedi was in the theater when it was released in 83 he was nine years old and Yoda's death had hit me a little hard but I love the movies nonetheless just as I love the first two movies and that's as opposed to say uh, this is T Wade Chartier um, also on YouTube who said that they were seven years old watching it on my stepdad's VHS set the one with Yoda's face on it. I mean, <laughs> watching things via hard media, like when's the last time any of us ever did that unless you're, you know, being a, a diehard DVD fan and you have the DVDs of the unaltered editions, if you will, which, you know, have been altered to some degree naturally, but not the special editions. You know what I mean. And the emotional impact of Jedi and Empire Strikes Back also comes through. This one goes on to say, I was so emotionally wounded by ESB that I was afraid every character would now turn. I remember asking, is he a bad guy now after Luke chokes the Gamorrean? And is she a bad guy now after Leia shouts, I'm here? In what I interpreted as a harsh tone while she was enslaved by Jabba. I was shocked by how easily Boba Fett went out, but that burp was hilarious, which yeah, it was. <laughs> and I loved the Ewoks. And it continues, I think I picked up way too much sarcasm for a seven-year-old from Han Solo. Yeah. <laughs> I can identify with that. The final lightsaber battle felt more intense than the Phantom Menace, which actually is rather amazing in its way, and was far more meaningful to me, which, yeah, I can totally see that as well. Lastly, with the final Force Ghost scene, I was like, who's that guy? <laughs> Presumably meaning Anakin Skywalker when Sebastian Shaw appeared. They were saying they were seven years old when they watched that. I was 12 years old. I think I made the connection. It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's easy to... <laughs> miss it basically i mean considering how you know the makeup and the prosthetics and the way that they turn sebastian shaw so you know so pale and cratered and damaged right versus what you know how you appeared like at the end of return of the jedi yeah i can definitely see how it would be confusing for a younger audience for sure so there was the theater experience, which is pretty common these days, and then the VHS experience, which is definitely not very common. And then there's the actual TV experience, which I feel like isn't that common, but you know, be that as it may. Huffelhoff said, Return of the Jedi was actually the first Star Wars movie I ever saw, and it hooked me right away. I don't remember how young I was, but it was on TV when my family visited my grandparents for Thanksgiving, and I've been a fan ever since. I do feel personally like when I go out of town and I'm, you know, in a hotel, if I turn on TBS or TNT, that if it's on a weekend, I'm likely to see a Star Wars movie or some Star Wars movie marathon at some point. I've talked about how you know, referencing the Disney Investor Day that happened in December of 2020, and we've talked about upcoming Star Wars projects. Well, while I was you know, watching that, I also happened to be traveling, and there were Star Wars movies on a loop on one of those channels, and it was just like, wow, how long are they going to be able to do this? I guess I imagined that at some point the contract would expire, and it would just be always on Disney Plus and never anywhere else. But that's, of course, the you know basic cable experience now. Now, and back in the day, it was a hugely popular situation when it would be on broadcast television. Like, it was a big deal when they had those on there, for sure. And it wasn't on nearly as often by comparison. Or when HBO got it, for example. And that's actually for Star Wars, perhaps, and probably Empire. I remember we knew somebody who had HBO who taped it for us, which wasn't supposed to work somehow, and yet it did. And so that was how I was watching. Star Wars movies on the regular when I was a kid. And something else about the uniqueness of the experience, this one's sort of highlighted by Dale Erdman from YouTube, says, I was seven when Star Wars came out in theaters. I guess that'd make me about you know, 12, was it 1983, so maybe 13. We usually didn't even think of a second installment for too many movies, let alone a third one. No, uh, None that would wind lines around the block to see the movie on opening night, which is very true. I mean, Jaws the year before it, uh, the year before the original Star Wars release, 
released. And yes, there were sequels to that, but no, they did not line <laughs> audiences around the block the same way that the Star Wars movies did. And finally, and this is a bit of a longer one, but this was a really cool story. This comes from Tony Sturgeon, who has been a supporter of the podcast for a long time. Tony, thank you so much for sharing this reverie. The summer Return of the Jedi was released. He says, I was 10 years old. My family had recently moved to England for my father's job. One of the first things we did after arriving there was take a trip to a seaside village for a day at the beach. We arrived and were looking for a place to park. We noticed everyone was wearing jackets and pants while we were dressed in shorts and t-shirts. Obviously, we were not ready for the weather in England and that actually put me in mind of the weather in Ireland in July when our family got to go there there were some days that were very much like that July in London was definitely a lot more temperate than what Tony was experiencing here so anyway Tony goes on we weren't sure what we were going to do since we weren't dressed for a day outdoors but we noticed a movie theater and on its marquee was Return of the Jedi I had been really disappointed that the movie uh, the move to England had not allowed me to see the movie right away so I was insanely excited for this experience I thoroughly enjoyed everything about it. However, halfway through the movie, when Princess Leia is meeting Wicket for the first time, all of a sudden the movie stopped. I nearly lost my mind. I've been waiting for this film for three years and then waiting even longer because of our move, and now I wasn't going to get to finish it. But then the words intermission appeared on the screen, and my parents had to explain to me that at some theaters they would pause the movie to allow you to get more concessions or go to the restroom. This was nothing I had ever experienced but was greatly relieved when I was allowed to finish the film after a brief 10 minutes break. It still remains one of my favorite theater experiences. And that's another thing about the movie going experience that has largely disappeared here in the U.S., the idea of an intermission. And certainly movies like <laughs> the Avatar movies just coming out could have used that for sure. And it just also kind of brings to mind the idea that a lot happens in that first half of Return of the Jedi. I mean, you feel like there are, you know, multiple set pieces, of course, but man, I mean, with the stuff that happens at Jabba's Palace and the speeder bike chase that happens on Endor, and then you've got Luke going back to Dagobah, and you've got the setup for the, you know, the Death Star attack happening and the Emperor showing up on the Death Star. Like, there is a huge amount of stuff that's packed into that first half of Return of the Jedi. And I don't think I really you know, thought about it that way from you know what it would look like from an intermission standpoint. So those are some of the responses I got when I asked about first experiences with Return of the Jedi. And I'm so grateful to everyone who shared their thoughts. Thank you so much for doing that. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.